<clears throat> All right, so in my assets, I've built this really strong blast. From here now, it's going to go to here. And basically, I don't think I need to even move the, the rocks. But I will just really quickly, I'm just going to kind of push them off to the side. Just going to push them out. Because even though you won't see it in the in the still image very much, you will get a sense of the the direction that they're moving when it is animated. And now they're just being blasted away, right? And then same thing with the background. So many layers. That's why it's our last compositing project. Then we deal with vectors for a while, and then we're going to learn how to combine the two together, which is a lot of fun for graphic design and layout. All right, so this is the next one. Big change. Go to my topmost visible layer. Select it, hold down shift, scroll down to the very base layer. Then go to hold down option, go to layer merge layers. It will give me what's called a merge layer at the top. Command A to select it all, Command C to copy it all, go to my stage, Command V to paste it on top. Command S if I want to save it. Then go back to my assets, Command D to deselect and delete. And now my last frame, I'm just going to make really simple. I'm going to make a new layer, a new asset. I'm just going to say edit fill with white. And if I want to be extra fancy, I can just take the out opacity down to like 90. <laughs> so the slightest suggestion is at the edge. But that's all. Okay, that's really just for the animation. That would be worthless in a refined storyboard to waste a space with just blank white. Now, what do I do? I'm going to copy that, but I have to merge it all first. So I hold down, select my topmost visible layer, hold down shift, scroll all the way to the bottom. Select them all, hold down Option, say Layer, Merge Layers. Back to the top, that Merge Layer, Command A, select it all, Command C, copy it all. Go to my stage, Command V, paste it in. I've got 22 layers in my stage. Time to save it. Time to go back to my assets. Deselect and delete. Save my assets. And now let's run this test animation. So... To do that, there are a few things I want to check. First, I want to check that my file image size is 800 by 800 pixels. So that would be 8 inches by 8 inches by 100 pixels. You can also see it in the corner, 8 inches by 8 inches by 100 pixels per inch. Good. The next thing I want to check is if my rulers are on. Command R will turn your rulers on and off. So Command R, have your rulers on. You can see that it's 8 inches. If you don't see inches there, you need to change it from being in pixel units to being in inches. That's something you can't do in Photopea, but it's very helpful in Photoshop. The way you change it is you go to Photoshop. At the upper left-hand corner, you go to Settings, and then you go to Units and Rulers. And you just change it from pixels, which is the default, to inches. And you can see that ruler change in real time. Why? Because this stage file is next going to become our layout file to help us space our panels. And so we want to work in inches. Okay, next, I go to my timeline. If my timeline is not open, I can open it by going to Window, Timeline. And when that shows up, you'll get this little option in the middle, Create Video Timeline with a drop-down arrow next to it. We don't want to create a video timeline. We're not doing video editing. So we click on that drop-down and it will say create frame animation. 
we want to click that and then click it again to get this. This is a frame animation timeline. The video timeline looks like this. We don't want that. Okay, so create a frame animation timeline. It comes in with a default timing, I don't know why, of five seconds. So we're going to have to change that. Sometimes it's zero seconds, just depends on what the defaults are for your Photoshop. Once that timeline is open, then you're going to go to the little hamburger, what are called the window options on the timeline. Little stacked horizontal lines in the upper right hand corner of the timeline window. Click on that and you're going to say make frames from layers. And it will do exactly as it sounds. It will take all of your layers and turn them into animation frames, each with their own timing. You might have a frame at the beginning that's empty, right? If you never deleted your background frame, which I advise you don't do, because if you del when that shows up, it reminds you that to get rid of frames, you don't hit delete. Instead, you just drag and drop them to the trash within the frame window. Okay, now you're going to set the timing for all of them. So to do that, you select your first frame, hold down shift, select your last frame. You might have 50 frames, you might have 9 frames, you might have like I have 21. But how, no matter how many frames you have, select them all, and you're going to use the same timing on all of them just to run a test. The default timing I use, I click on the time signature, it doesn't matter which one, because it's going to apply to all of them, and you say other, and then you can type in your time. I do 0.3, that would be 3 frames per second. 30 milliseconds, right? And then I play it. It will play through forever. You can set it with this drop down to play through once or three times, but forever is what we want. And you just watch it go. Now, this is where we can kind of polish it. And this is called animating on the stage. And I find it really distracting to see this little selection moving while I'm looking at it. So what I often do is I just hit tab and that will wipe away all the, uh, all the tools. And I hit tab again, they come back. But I can see if there's anything I wanna fix before I save it. And what I wanna fix is all this movement seems good. The character movement seems good. The glowing seems good, but it seems like once it explodes, it should go a lot faster. This is what's different between traditional animation and digital animation. We can set a different frame delay for each individual frame, which you can't do in traditional film, right? Traditional film is, is locked, usually 24 frames per second. All right, so if I want to speed up just from here to here, right? I just take those frames I think from here to here, hold down shift, and then I change the time signature on them. So I'm just going to change them to 0 0.2 instead of 0 0.3. See what kind of difference that makes. And it seems to make a big difference. Boom. All right. What if I want it to accelerate as I go? So, okay, I'll do 0 0.2 for, for two frames. But then I'll go to point 0.1 just for this frame. See what that does. And you get sick of looking at your own animation after a while. But boom. So that really helps. So I have on my storyboard set to reset. And all I've animated is that it goes to, to pure white almost pure white, right? So how do I set it up to, to restart again so that it's not this really strong jump cut from here to here? This is also animating on the stage. You already have all these frames. Now you can do anything you want with these frames. So one very simple way, which works for some animations and not for others, that I'll show you, is to select all your frames. Then click on the, the frame.
frame window up the timeline window options and you're going to say copy frames for whatever reason uh, command C doesn't work for this right because this is specific to frames not layers so you're going to copy all those frames you've selected now I'm going to open those options again and I'm going to say paste frames and I'm going to paste them after my selection so what does that do I had 21 frames it then adds another copy of those 21 frames directly after my first 21 frames that doesn't do anything if I play the animation it just now plays them through twice but it's the exact same thing as just repeating so while those that second collection is of frames is selected I use the window options again and I'm gonna say reverse the frames that will swap the order of them so basically this will play it forward and then it will play it backwards it's not gonna make a lot of sense because it's gonna be like my creature is creating the universe <laughs> after exploding it but for some animations just Playing it forward and backwards is a perfect way to get it to, to loop smoothly and to set to reset. It's not a requirement, but it's nice. So let's see what that looks like. And we all like playing things backwards. Woo, and he's going to spit up the mosquito. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? But that is one way of setting to reset. Playing forwards and backwards. It might work for yours. Okay. So what if I don't want to do that? because it doesn't make sense for mine. So here I am before I, I did that. What I can also do is I can create in between frames. They're called tweens, right? Between my last frame and my first frame to slow down that jump cut from white to my first frame. So how do I do that? Well, I select those frames. So I, for this, I can't hold down shift because they're not touching each other. Instead, I have to hold down command and then click on my final frame, hold down command, and click on my first frame. So now both are selected. And now I'm going to click on this button, which tweens animation frames. Tweens short for in-between frames. And I'm going to add five frames. Oh, maybe I'll shorten it. Four frames. And I'm going to do it to position opacity and effects. And I'm going to do it only to the selected layer. Let's see what that does. Yep, it didn't do what I wanted. I was hoping that that could solve a problem. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I was trying something out in real time there. Okay, so I'm going to select the last frame, hold down Command, select the first frame. Click on In-Betweens. I'm going to add four frames. You can add as many as you want. And I'm going to select all layers, right? And change the position, the opacity, and the effects. Really, the only thing we're going to be changing is the opacity. But Okay, now, when I see them, this is what it will look like when I play. It's not going to look great yet. You see that checkerboard? That checkerboard's a bit of a problem. Because that checkerboard means that there'll be empty space there. Because GIFs support transparency. So if this GIF is playing on a red website, then red is going to come through all those frames. But this is how I fix it. You can see how it starts to transition between the last frame and the first frame. It's just a crossfade. just fades it in. So what do I do? I go to that first frame that shows the checkerboard. It's right here. It's in these final four frames, right? And then I scroll down. All this is doing is turning on two layers at once and then changing the opacity of each to 80%. But that bottom frame, that's 80%, this is 20%. I want this to be 100%. And I want that to be 100% on the next one as well. And I want it to be 100% on the next one as well. And I do a lot of this in animating and it drives me nuts. And I figured out some shortcut ways that I don't have to adjust the opacity for each tween but that would be a lot to explain <laughs> so so you have to adjust that for each one so that you don't get any checkerboard and then this is what it turns out to and that's a simple way to to reset it right to just have it fade in make sense
If I wanted to slow